But right now, you look for that one final breakout here above 38, maybe a pop as high as 45 to 48, and then again, Hello everyone, Bitcoin is ready for a pop. Once the ETF is approved, says Gareth Soloway, Chief Market Strategist of Inthemoneystocks.com, and our special guest today. Here's his strategy for how to play this move, as well as his outlook for stocks and the economy going into 2024. A must watch. Subscribe now, hit that bell icon, and embark on an enriching journey toward financial success. Let's unlock the potential of these markets together and pave the way for a brighter financial future. Welcome aboard. The demand for institutional investors for Bitcoin BTC $38,756 became evident on November 10 as the Chicago Mercantile Exchange CME. Bitcoin futures flipped Binance's BTC futures markets in terms of size. According to BTC derivatives metrics, those investors are showing strong confidence in Bitcoin's potential to break above the $40,000 mark in the short term. Tell us what's going on right now. Uh, is this, uh, you know, is this new level a bullish indicator for you? We're not so much. Yeah, so so here was the key, right, is if you look at this level down here on the charts, and again, if we extend this out, you know, basically what we were doing is looking at this, it really was around 31 to 32,000, and we kept on bubbling against it. Now, going back to the bull market of Bitcoin, this was the push above, and then it retested. Then it broke above. We went to that 65,000 level. We came back, retested that same level again, 31,000, give or take. We then ran up again. We came down and kind of kissed it, and then finally broke lower. So what that means is this was support, right? It kept on hitting and bouncing off of it. Once we broke below it, it became resistance, right? So ultimately, once we came back up, resistance pulls back, resistance and hammers a bunch of times pulls back, and then the breakout occurred. And what I did was once this breakout occurred, you have to think that there's further upside on Bitcoin. And Bitcoin went to my next level here around 38,000. It's established itself. Just zooming out, you can see. And again, I'm going to erase this one line. So basically, this little underbelly area here to here, that's where we've stalled out in the current price action. And look at what's created here. And I love charts. You guys know I, you know, those of you that follow me and follow uh, David, I'm all about the charts, all about the data. The data speaks to me. It's not my personal opinion. It is what it is. So you could see if we connect all the lows of Bitcoin here, they you notice how Bitcoin keeps on hammering on this upsloping trend line. Same thing on the top. It keeps hitting the top, pulling back, hitting, pulling back. Here it pierced about a week ago, pulled back. Yesterday it pierced, pulled back. And today again it pierced and pulled back, the 38,000 level. So what this is telling me is if we can get a daily close above 38,000, you should get your next leg up on Bitcoin. On the other side, if we break below 36.5, 36, 36 three, you then have to be cautious. Now, overall, I look at probabilities. And when you have a flat top with an upsloping trend line, probabilities favor further upside, maybe by about a 75 to 70% margin. So again, right now, even though it's struggling to break out, you do go in that favor. That's the angle that you would expect it. But just be aware, if it breaks 36.3, 36.5, that would be where, where warning signs would start to appear. Uh, are you surprised that the uh, big run up or the uh, breakout in uh, mid October, the third week of October, uh, wasn't immediately followed by a pullback? In fact, like you mentioned, it just consolidated upward. Yeah, but I, but I think I think in all fairness, it made a lot of sense in that there was so much hype over this spot ETF, right? We heard about the filings. I mean, there were just so many filings from different big institutions about Bitcoin ETFs that that essentially it just created this grind higher. Shorts were too scared to short. Longs just kind of continued to accumulate. The idea is, again, some of these bigger BlackRock players are probably already accumulating. So all of that combined, I think, kind of makes sense why it's continued to grind higher. My big fear is this and I'll, I'll give you the one case where i think this is the likely outcome i think we're going to get the the approval of the spot etf you're going to see this monstrous one day big pop candle and then i think that puts in a short-term top and i think we actually sell off to the low 30s again following that announcement so again you know there's been so much buying going into it it's almost like buy the rumor and then the likely scenario and we see this in stocks is sell the news and i think that's very possible on bitcoin
But if the price already moved up on this expectation, then wouldn't it already be priced in? Like, why wouldn't we have another pop, even if it gets well? Cooler? So, so the pop, right? So this is the algos. The algos will buy the headline news, just like they do with stocks. And there's going to be a certain amount of retail crowd that get the news, and they're like, "Holy cow! I had you know a couple thousand left in my account. I was already in, but I just got to buy this news as well." So it creates that initial pop. Just like in all fairness, like remember NVIDIA reported earnings a couple quarters ago, it pushed up to $520 and then it came back in the day after that happened. And so I kind of expect the same sort of thing to occur with Bitcoin. I'm just listening to this and I'm thinking, okay, as a uh, as somebody who wants to learn about trading, I'm thinking, well, isn't this just an easy trade then? If it's expected that this thing is going to go through, the uh, approval is going to go through. And like you said, we're going to get a one day pop. Wouldn't I just buy now, wait for that one or two day pop and then sell as soon as the news comes out? So yes, if you can guarantee 100% that it goes according to plan, then absolutely. But I listen, I've been burned way too many times in my trading career thinking something is a no brainer. And then usually when I think that way, that's when it's not. So like there's still hurdles, right? I mean, could the government get involved with regulation? Could they postpone? Could the SEC say, hey, listen, there's stuff going on with Binance. We have to delay the ETF, right? There's too many variables to kind of get 100%. And there's no such thing as 100%. And so considering Bitcoin's up, you know, just in the last few months, about what, 30, 40%. I can't I can't jump on board now just for a one day pop that may likely happen, but may not happen as well. Things are looking good for the upside probabilities, but you still no. want to hedge a little bit on the downside. So how would you play this? Well, I, I think there's a couple of ways. So number one, if if those of you out there watching already have positions in Bitcoin from lower levels, then I think you just leave it be, right? You're kind of protected. You're, you're in the money at this point. Let's say you bought in at 30 or 31 or 25. You just kind of do its thing. I wouldn't suggest chasing at these levels for a one day pop that likely will happen, but may not happen, right? You don't want to change your overall average to be worse. Now, what I'm going to actually do is likely if we get that big, what they call a God candle, I'll actually look to probably short into it. So if we get up to 45 or 48, there's a big level at 48, like a max move level at 48. I'll probably actually take a little bit of a short on that side and, and look for that pullback and then cover on a pullback on that, uh, that move. Uh, prior to the last time we spoke, um, which is early October, Bitcoin and the NASDAQ still held a pretty consistent correlation. Uh, that kind of diverged for a bit when Bitcoin shot up straight to the moon and the NASDAQ didn't do that. Can we just pull up a chart uh, or maybe two charts showing uh, Bitcoin and the stock market side by side just to, just to illustrate the point that uh, this correlation didn't hold perfectly? And I'm curious to know how you as a trader would interpret such a divergence at this time. Yeah, so so basically here you have the um let's go to the daily chart of Bitcoin and the I'm side by side the S&P 500 chart. And what you did see in all fairness is while the S&P was selling off here Bitcoin was bottoming and rallying uh, back to the upside. Now, interestingly enough, notice the latest move in Bitcoin is coordinated with the risk on move in the S&P 500. So I do also think that some of the upside, I mean, we've seen all coins rally tremendously in the last month. I do think that's partially to blame for risk on. Everyone is risk on. It seems like the Fed is engineering this magical, perfect landing. Inflation's coming in. They could start cutting rates next year. I know we'll probably talk about that in a minute but ultimately that latest move is correlated this last move was not and i think part of that again is when you get news specific on an asset that again you know the market cap of bitcoin is not even as big as amazon right so so you have to say that news can directly influence it and it can make it diverge from the s p 500 for periods of time before it reverts back to that kind of risk asset yeah, I wanted to ask you about uh, risk on appetite, but let's finish off on Bitcoin first. So uh, Bitcoin bottom line, uh, what is your what is your play right now? What's your positioning uh, at these current levels? Yeah, so my, my positioning is mostly neutral. I have a very tiny, tiny like pinky finger in the short side of, of Bitcoin up here, just in case it fails. Um, if it pops up, I will go heavily short around that 48 to 50 level. But remember, folks, I'm a swing trader. So I'm in and out in a few days to a week or so. Um, you know, where I am now on shorting it there, you know, in a year from now, I probably will be long because I am a longer term bull on Bitcoin. It's just I'm going to play the interim levels in between. But right now you look for that one 
one final breakout here above 38, maybe a pop as high as 45 to 48. And then again, once that news out and you get that pop, I think honestly, you either trim back positions or you look to the short side. I've talked to you a lot about Bitcoin throughout this year. Would it be fair to say, because you sound a little bit less bearish than earlier in the yep. year, would it be fair to say you're a little bit, I would say, less bearish, more neutral on Bitcoin? That's correct. Absolutely. So so one of the things to kind of keep in mind is that I'm very much level driven, right? And so once we broke above 30, 31, 32, now on a retrace, I actually look to buy it at that level. So this was resistance here. If we pull back into it, it becomes support. And so again, as a technician, it's all about the charts. The charts tell me what to do. I don't tell the charts what to do. Now, I will say this. You know, we've talked about my downside targets of maybe back to 15,700, maybe 12, maybe 10. There is one scenario that that can still happen. And that's if we get a major equity sell-off. So if the NASDAQ, for instance, dumps 50%, let's say we go into a much worse recession, inflation is still high, the Fed can't lower rates as much as the markets need them to, and equities really collapse, then I do think the risk off trade does ultimately kill Bitcoin down to that lower 15, 12, 10 level. And that's the one scenario it could happen. Otherwise, honestly, I think the 15,700 15, level, if that doesn't happen, holds and is the low. Okay, so that's no longer your base case then. Right, right correct. correct. No longer the base, the base case. case. All right. Subscribe, like, and share. Let's make this journey to financial empowerment unforgettable.